Good morning. Good morning and welcome to worship on this beautiful day that God has given to us. Um, I noti I've noticed that there are some farmers out harvesting crops, so that is wonderful. Hopefully and prayerfully they will remain safe during this time. Um, <clears throat> So just a few quick announcements. Today in Hanska at the community center, Zion is having their drive-through meal. I think hopefully there'll be signs telling you how to do the drive-through. Um, and I think maybe if you go to the north end and go down the, the alley. But like I said, hopefully there will be signs telling you. Um, tomorrow night at 6.30, there is the joint ministry meeting at Lake Hanska. Um, so anybody who is supposed to be there, please be there tomorrow night. And this Wednesday from, from 6 till midnight, no, 6 to 7.30 is 8th and 9th grade confirmation, and then from 7.30 to 8.45 is 10th and 11th confirmation. So we had a great kickoff the other night. Um, so I do want to thank everyone who helped and was there. Um, we do have a large group of kids, which is wonderful. You don't see that very often anymore. Um, there's a note here about Give Plus Mobile. Um, it's changing to Vanco Mobile at the end of this month. And so it says, ask, uh, Joyce asks for you to call her for more information. Um, I'm not sure how many people use it, but, or if you're just interested in using it, give Joyce a call. And then on October 29th, there's going to be a trunk or treat here at Faith. So, um, it's from 4 to 6.30, dress up, um, dress your trunk up. Those are always fun, you know. Um, so I think there will be more information coming. Any other announcements at this time?
In our gospel this morning, we will hear how Jesus' disciples are upset because there are people who are not part of their group who are out healing people in Jesus' name. And they wonder, how can they do that? Let us center ourselves for worship. Please rise as you are able, and we will begin with the confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us be seated for our opening hymn. What a Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear, what a privilege to carry, everything to God in prayer, oh, what peace we Thank you. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Generous God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit, and in all we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. constitutes what constitutes legitimate need and legitimate leadership in the focus of this reading God provides manna in the wilderness yet the people crave meat what is truly needful God bestows the spirit on 70 elders yet two men not designated as leaders prophesy in the power of God's spirit what constitutes real leadership? Our first reading comes from Numbers chapter 11, verses 4 to 6, verses 10 to 16, and 24 to 29. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight? that you lay the burden of all this people on me. Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a sucking child to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give to all these people? For they come weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. If I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered seventy elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders, and when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. But they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one man named Eled and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, and Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them? Word of God, word of life. Let us read responsively from Psalm 19, verses 7 through 14. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. The 
Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. In our second reading, marks of the Christian community include praying for those who are sick and in need, celebrating with those in good health, restoring those who have strayed, confessing sins to one another, and offering forgiveness to each other. The second reading comes to us from James chapter 5, beginning with verse 13. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of joy, of praise. Are any among you sick? They shall call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. You will not hear the gospel at this moment, but the children are going to come forward and sing.
I think you need a pastor in their 20s to keep up with those kids. <sighs> anyway, the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire, Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Christ. So since you kids got away from me, I'm going to ask you a question now. What happens when you tattle on someone? Now they're quiet. You get, in trouble. you get in trouble, right? Right. Well, in both the first reading and the gospel, we hear that people go running to Moses and Jesus because there are those who are prophesying and healing without their permission. Right? And what happens? In both of those readings, the people who go running say, are told, let them be. Let them do this. Now in our society today, I don't know about you, I, um, I was just thinking of people tattling, and Kids, adults do it as much as anybody else, right? How many of you adults have had somebody tattle on you? Yeah? I usually just shake my head and say, like, really? Can't we work this out? But what I want to focus on today is that that we have become a society of either or, or if and. And I'm basing this really kind of on the disciples. There's these people out there who are healing, who are casting out demons in Jesus' name. And the disciples run to Jesus and really what they're saying is, Jesus, either they join us or they're not allowed to heal people, right? 
If they don't join us, then we should make them stop. Now think about our world today. How many Christians are there in our world? And I'm not going to give you a number because I don't know either. But there's a lot, right? What if we were to say, if you do not worship the exact same way that we do, then you are not Christian? Wow, that's kind of judgmental, isn't it, on our part? And I can hear Jesus saying, wait a second. All that I've ever said is that you believe in me and follow me and show people God's love through me and the Spirit. So why have we become so split. So if you don't believe my way, then I'm leaving? If you don't like the way I interpret the Bible, then you're wrong? What is that doing to the body of Christ? For me, what it's doing is it's causing turmoil. It's making... It's so people struggle in their faith. People who need to hear that Christ came to forgive their sins and has sent the Spirit to help guide us, enable us, teach us. So there's days I wonder if we are throwing stumbling blocks in the way of people. So another question for you kids, why do you come to church? To what? Pray to Jesus, yes. I was waiting to hear because my mom makes me. A few of us would have had that answer in our day and time to pray to Jesus, to learn what Jesus has done, to learn what it means to be in a relationship with God, right? So why is it that we struggle with accepting others into the body of Christ? How are we showing others that the body of Christ includes everyone? That's radical, isn't it? It includes everyone. So I was just at Lake Hanska this morning. And I asked them this question. How many are afraid that the congregation is dying? So I could ask that same question here, right? How many are afraid that the congregation is dying? How many are concerned that we don't seem to have as many people coming as we did 5, 10, 20 years ago. Yeah? So what are we doing? How are we showing people that Christ is still alive and is relevant in our society today? I can tell you Zion, with their drive-through meal, which is a free will offering, and they have said that they will not turn anybody away. If they can't pay, they still get a meal. 
That's one way of showing that Christ is alive. How are we? How are we showing the people that are really in need, that are really searching, that Christ is for them also? Do we have answers? You know, one way that I can say was, excuse me, was Vacation Bible School this summer. But what are we doing now? Who is the one that is supposed to communicate with those who haven't been to church for a while? Well, I usually find the expectation is that the pastor comes in and the pastor should call all these people who haven't been to church for a while. Why should it be the pastor? Why can't it be all of us that talk to them? And visiting the people who can no longer come to church don't get me wrong, I love visiting our shut-ins. I think it's wonderful. But I also know that quite a few would covet a visit from somebody else from the congregation. So how are we doing this? How are we showing Christ's love without putting stumbling blocks in front of other people or in front of ourselves. So how many of you feel that you're able to talk to somebody else about faith? There's a couple. I know. We as Lutherans love to keep our mouths shut and not say too much about Jesus because that's stepping on somebody else's toes, right? How is it that we can be those people that see somebody else healing or prophesying or teaching and either say, great job, or why don't you come join us and we can work together. Because that's what this is about. This is about us working together, not only with people here at Faith and the people of Zion and Lake Hanska, but us working together with all Christians. Working together with all Christians to show the world that Christ is alive. Sounds easy, right? Okay, maybe not so easy. But we can start here. We can start, start here in this place. We have, what, 50, 60 children that could be tending Sunday school, right? And we had six or seven. How is it that we can invite them in? We do have quite a few youth between 7th and 12th grades. How do, we, how do we help them understand that being confirmed isn't an end, but it's a time that you can begin voting and helping shape your own congregation? So I think these are things that we, as a body of Christ, can work on, right? together 
And yes, I can help lead. But one thing I want to do is walk side by side with you as we invite people, as we teach people, as we welcome people, and as we live as the body of Christ. The disciples were being possessive. They wanted Jesus all to themselves. Let's, let's change that and give Jesus to the world. Give Jesus to those who need him the most, which at times is us, right? Right?